All right, Jake, here we go. Week 17, we've made it to the end of the of the season. Uh, and is it deja vu? I think it feels like deja vu. Win and get in scenario against the Houston Texans in Houston, which was the same thing uh, that we were doing last year. Mm -hmm. uh, but this year, we're facing a much worse Texans team, but with Deshaun Watson at quarterback, where last year we were facing a division champion Texans team who was resting Deshaun Watson and playing A.J. McCarron. So uh, this is this is kind of weird. I feel weird about this. Uh, but yeah. uh, man, Jake, yeah, let's. It's it, here we are at, at the end of the season, and the Titans have a chance to clinch their first division title since 2008. I'm pumped for it. I know everyone out there is excited about it. I know you're pumped for this too, Jake. Uh, but you know, we'll, we'll get to the we'll get to the preview uh, here in a minute. But uh, of course, we, we got to take a look at the first matchup. Of course, uh, when these two teams played, and uh, it was it was a barn burner to, to say the least, Jake. Probably one of the most exciting Titans games of the season, uh, mm -hmm. which is saying a lot because there's definitely been a handful of exciting close finishes. Uh, but the Titans miraculously at the end made a fourth quarter surge to tie the game up, send it to overtime. It was the Derrick Henry show uh, running for over 200 yards. And I think he had a 50 yard reception in overtime to set up his game winning mm -hmm. touchdown. Titans win that game 42 to 36 in overtime. Uh, just an incredible game. Uh, and if Derrick Henry, you know, it's kind of kind of wanting to mess around a little bit, kind of feeling like I might do another 200-yard performance against the same Texans defense. Uh, he's going to be getting pretty close to that 2,000-yard mark, Jake. Uh, it's still pretty out of you know, reach-ish, but, I mean, Derrick Henry's ran for over 200 yards on this defense this season mm -hmm. uh, before. So we'll, uh, we'll see if he can do it again. Um, also an interesting note uh, coming into this game is that the Titans have a chance to sweep the Texans for the first time since 2007, uh, which is an incredibly long time. I mean, I guess I can believe it. You know, the Texans kind of have sort of had our number, you know, in the mm -hmm. 2010s, you know, with the Matt Schaub and uh, Arian, Arian Foster, Foster. Yep. Uh, Andre Johnson era, just destroying this Titans team. But that's an interesting stat that you pulled out that I had not realized yet. So yeah, a chance to sweep this Texans team for the first time since 2007. Uh, so uh, yeah, you'd, you'd love to see that, get that little monkey off our back. Um, uh, but yeah, I don't know, Jake, uh, how you feeling? How, how's I, it going? I'm very pumped up. Yes, I know this week, a lot of Titans fans, I feel like have their, you know, their heart or their stomachs or in their throats and they're nervous about this Houston Texans team. Oh, what are we gonna do about JJ Watt? He's gonna have this team fired up and ready to play. Well, let me tell you something, Justin. Tell I don't me. give two you-know-whats about J.J. Watt's post-game rant after last week. They lost to the Brandon Allen-led Bengals. Uh, and they looked, you know, they made Brandon Allen look like a, a really, really good option at quarterback. So, you know, <laughs> I don't really give a rip about J.J. Watt's uh, rant. If, okay. if all it took was an impassioned speech for this team to play better, they wouldn't be four and eleven. They would be they would be probably in the playoffs. If it, if it was all that it took was a little bit of motivation, a little kick in the ass. You don't think they've gotten that over this four and eleven stretch? You know, I, I do, I'm just not a JJ Watt guy. I don't know if it's if I'm coming out <laughs> of the box too hot or not on JJ Watt. I don't yeah. like the guy. I mean, I don't, Titans fans probably as a whole don't like the guy. Yes, I know what he's done charity wise and, and and what he's done in the community for Houston all of that is great yeah. but just football football just JJ Watt only yeah football like JJ Watt I don't like him at all and you know I I, I don't give a shit about you know his his rant <laughs> I'm just I'm just going to say it plainly like that uh so okay. hopefully Rabel's going to have this team ready to go and from what we've seen in the past Rabel does have this team ready to go in these kind of must win situations and yeah. come on, they're four and eleven, Justin. They're four and eleven. All the Titans have to four do is take care of business, and they got the first division title since '08. Uh, mm, rant over. I just wanted to I address that. A lot of a lot of people are bringing up the JJ Watt speech. Yeah. I know, and I kind of but was, I you know, it. I was kind of I, on that in that boat too, where I was like, oh great, you know, is this going to fire the team up? So you're making me feel better. You're making me feel better to not take too much uh, into this JJ Watt rant, uh, even though. You know, what did you think about the rant itself? Like, I was, I was like, I do agree. Like, you know, if you, if you don't care, then get out. Like, come on. If, yeah. I mean, this is a privilege to play in the NFL, all that stuff. Uh, you know, you, you bust your butt six months out of the year to play a game, mm -hmm. and you're, you're paid very well as, as professional athletes. Uh, so, yeah, and, and whenever you're not giving effort, it just pisses him off. And I, don't know, I was kind of like, yeah, I agree. Okay, but still, 
the, it's not enough for me to like J.J. Watt on the football field. No. <laughs> he's, made, he's made life miserable for our quarterbacks over the years. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't like the finger wag. I just – yeah, I don't, I, you know, I don't yeah. like playing him, okay? Yeah. Get, get him out of here. So it's hopefully, hard for us um, to find a Titans fan who likes the football version of J.J. Watt. I mean, <laughs> yeah. he's – He's been a thorn in our side for years. But I will say, you know, he's getting a little over the hill. He doesn't scare me as much. Yep. Uh, coming off the edge, I'm going to say that, and he's going to get a strip sack at a crucial time. He did. Something. He did the but, first uh, game, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I think he did a strip sack on Tannehill. Like the first play that – because that was the game Taylor Lewan went out uh, with an ACL injury. The mm-hmm. first play when Sam Brelo came in, I think J.J. Watt got around him and did a, yeah, had a strip sack on him. So – uh, yeah, hold on. come on, guys. we got to be prepared for that to happen again. <laughs> this guy's always doing stuff like that uh, against the man. Titans. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we'll see. But, yeah, we can go ahead and get into this. Um, and a lot of, you know, players kind of questionable up in the air. Uh, and we'll, we'll get into that as we talk about these uh, cat- category matchups here. Uh, the first one, Jake, I'll let you take it away here. The Titans passing offense against this Houston passing defense, who, like I just said, is missing some key pieces. Yeah, uh, no doubt. So the Titans took a little shot in the passing department last week, going up to a snowy Lambeau, not being able to move the ball very well uh, overall as an offense, quite frankly. Uh, They've dropped down to 21st in overall passing offense, but they're going up against a Houston Texans defense who is 26th against the the pass, coming off some really bad performances against some quarterbacks who are not as noteworthy, you know, obviously Brandon Allen last week. Uh, you know, put put them on a put them on a highlight reel. Uh, two names we won't be seeing uh, that we saw in our first matchup in Week Five. Uh, Justin Reed find himself find his finds himself. Pardon me on the injured reserve list, and Bla- Bradley Roby was on the suspended list for that PED. You know, Brian Cushing's your strength coach. You're going to get uh, some yes. PEDs through the building. Uh, so definitely two huge blows to the secondary who struggled to begin with in this season. I don't recall their pass defense being anything of great note uh, in the week five matchup. Something I did want to note in this one coming in, Corey Davis and A.J. Brown as a tandem. Man, have we been spoiled this year with Titans wide receivers and their production. Corey Davis needs just 55 yards for his first ever 1,000-yard season. And then A.J. Brown only needs 76 yards to go over his second now in two years, uh, 1,000-yard seasons. You would absolutely love, love, love to see that duo get over 1,000 each. Uh, And, you know, you'd especially like that as a Titans fan because I think if Corey Davis is over 55 yards, A.J. Brown's over 76, I think there's a good chance the Titans won this ball game. Uh, Just, you know, box score looking uh, alone. So, you know, I don't know, Justin, what do you think? I think the Titans get the edge here. I mean, yes, Tannehill didn't have a great performance. You know, two interceptions in, in the game at Lambeau should have been three. Quite frankly, you know, the offense sputtered, looked bad in the snow. Uh, But, you know, I would give us the edge still here against an inferior, at least on paper, secondary. They've lost some big names. And, you know, A.J. Brown, Corey Davis have just been phenomenal through the year. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, I I agree. We should get the edge in this passing attack. Uh, you know, A.J. Brown, that first game, I think he, was, he, had, he had a really good game, had a couple touchdowns. I think he was, he was mossing a couple uh, Texan defenders uh, a little bit. And, uh, dude, but, and Corey Davis, I mean, yeah, he needs 55 yards, but that's the same amount that he needed going into the Green Bay game. Yeah. <laughs> Given how great Corey Davis has been for us this season, he's uh, really broken through, broken out. And also, I will mention that both of these receivers have only played in 13 games. They've both, both missed wow. two games each, and they could still both top 1,000 yards heading into this final game. Uh, but going back to Davis – And we've seen it throughout his career, but even in a breakout season, why does he just disappear from games Mm -hmm. entirely? Uh, Why didn't he didn't even get targeted until the second half of the, of the uh, green Bay game. And it's like, dude, we're getting blown out by three touchdowns in a situation. We should be throwing the ball all over the yard to try and catch up. Corey Davis came away with two targets in that game. Didn't see his first one until the second half, I believe. So I don't know if it was a Jair Alexander that was, you know, locking him down, shutting him down. Was he not getting open? Were they trying to take Davis out of the game uh, completely? I, I don't know. But it's kind of head scratching that we're still seeing the disappearing act on occasion from Davis because uh, mm. he's shown great ability, uh, a high, high end wide receiver, number two, possibly, you know, could could maybe touch into that, you know, number one on your depth chart receiver for, for a team. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you still love this duo. You love what they bring to the table. 
This uh, this Texans passing defense is not what the Green Bay uh, passing defense is. And I think, you know, with uh, the elements, the weather elements being back mm -hmm. down to normal in Houston's uh, dome, I think. Mm -hmm. or they have like a retractable roof, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. But it's not going to be snowing in Houston. Uh, so maybe getting back to normal in that sense, it'll be a little bit easier going for these receivers to come out of their breaks, uh, finding holes in, in uh, the pass defense. Uh, so hopefully it's a little more easy going uh, for, for this passing game. But yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think we should definitely definitely get the advantage uh, here in that in that passing attack. This offense, man, and and you've enjoyed having this slot, I think, all season long. Uh, you can take it away with this rushing. Uh, Titans rushing offense versus Texans rushing defense matchup because this is one everybody's going to have their eye on, obviously, with the King needing uh, 223 yards to get to 2,000. Can he do it, Justin? Can he do it? I believe. I believe in him to do it. Um, you know, but not. we don't need to, like, rush him to death in order to get there. I mean, you would love to yeah. see it if the opportunity's there. If he has a great first half, if he has over 100 yards in the first half or something like that, then, yeah. Let, let, let's feed the beast. That's a, that's a special accomplishment to, to hit 2,000 yards for a season. But you'd still want to play it smart, uh, you know, do what's best for the team. Uh, if it looks like and it's trending like we're going to be on our way to a win, we're up by two or three scores late in the third quarter. Henry has 160-ish yards. I would be okay He's with just taking him out. Yeah, I would, I would be okay with taking him out <clears throat> at that point. But, uh, but we'll see. Uh, I mean, he can do it. Titans uh, number two in running offense in the league. Uh, Texans are dang near last, 31st in rush defense. I mean, yeah, we can just say that, and then that'd be the end of the conversation. And yeah. you know, <laughs> we get the advantage based on the numbers alone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but some of these guys, I mean, you know, we mentioned J.J. Watt. Uh, in the sack department, he does lead their team in sacks with just five, but he's still – I mean, that's way better than any of the Titans players. That's Correct. a third of our total sack total. But we'll get, to, we'll get to the sacks, lack of sacks later on here in a minute. Uh, but you know, Terrell Adams, Ross Blaylock, uh, Zach Cunningham, you know, Vander Vanderbilt product, very quality linebacker for him, uh, leads the NFL in tackles. So obviously, yeah, leading, leading their team in tackles. Uh, he's all over the place. Uh, so those are some of the key names on that front seven that we're going to be looking at. Uh, you know, throughout the year, they had just injuries and COVID. Uh, the, a lot of these key pieces that the Texans are accustomed to having, like Bernardrick McKinney, Whitney Merciless, uh, great players like that, not part of this front seven. Uh, or, or haven't been for, for a little while now. Uh, so we won't have to be worrying about that. So a lot of, you know, kind, kind of lower end guys on the depth chart that are going to be uh, trying to stop Derrick Henry. So uh, it should be a day for, for Henry, man. And you know, Derrick Henry is a, you know, he doesn't express and show a lot of emotion. But, uh, you know, I think he said it after uh, the Cleveland game, like he was pissed and he had something to prove. He had a chip on the shoulder and he was angry and how the way he played in that game. And I bet he kind of feels the same way uh, about the Packers game, not, not playing his best. You know, he, he looks at himself as a leader, as he should on this offense, and the team kind of rallies around him to, to kind of, uh, you know, pace the offense, carry the offense. And a lot of things that we do revolves around him, and he understands that. Uh, we do depend on, uh, on his success a lot. So I don't think, yeah, he's going to be messing around. I think he's coming in laser-focused. Uh, kind of how he did in that week 17 game last year where he ran all over the Texans, putting yes. up uh, 200 yards in that game. If he does, dude, that would be three games <laughs> that Henry has, that has ran over 200 yards against a single team uh, in the last two years. That would, in, in the last two seasons, yeah. he would have three 200-yard games. Like, goodness gracious, Texans. Uh, so the exact number is 223 that he needs for all you people rooting for a 2,000-yard season. So – We'll see if he gets there, but man, I'm I'm just hoping that you know the offense is effective and, and does does its damage uh, enough to win the game. So uh, obviously, uh, I think we get the advantage in this rush rush defense. So yeah, uh, no no doubt. Yeah. Uh, just a just a little sprinkle, a little uh, statistic. It kind of got buried. I mean, yeah. Shout out to Dalvin Cook. I mean, it, it sucks the circumstance yeah. that is has taken him out of this Week 17 matchup. But with Dalvin Cook being out of this Week 17 matchup. Derrick Henry, barring a 700-yard performance by whoever's in third, uh, has secured back-to-back -back rushing titles. First player to do it since yeah. LT in the late aughts. I think it was 07, 08, <laughs> somewhere in there, maybe 06, 07. But uh, aughts. shout out to the King, leading the league in rushing two years in a row. Uh, we we, mm -hmm. we love Derrick Henry. Uh, you know, was, uh, Titans fans obviously love Derrick Henry. All long live the King. 
all hail the king. Uh, I don't think he does go for the, the the 2K. I think if he does have 160 in like the third quarter, the Titans are up big, which I think we're forecasting in this game. Knock on wood, uh, no doubt there. But uh, yeah, I think he doesn't get enough carries to get to that 223. He's going to need to break two long ones, and then you know you might think about it. Yeah. Uh, right. So so we'll see. I have in the sheet here uh, for our preview. If Derrick Henry doesn't go for at least 130 in this game. So help me God, because I, you know, you're you're looking at a tight game. I think in that aspect, but yes, yeah. definite advantage. Titans rush offense. I mean, yeah, the 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 Packers kind of put the the blueprint on how to slow down this offense. Just game plan to shut down Henry, and you know, you have a couple good uh, solid corners that can take out either Davis or Brown. And yeah, we might we might be uh, struggling to uh, to move the ball. So I mean. I don't think the, the Texans have the personnel or talent on, on defense to do what the Packers did, uh, especially without weather help, helping uh, out as well in, in this yeah. game. Uh, so, yeah, so I think we get the clear advantage of our offense going against their defense. But, of course, it could be flipped because we're looking at this defense, man, and good God. I mean, if there's anything if, – if there's a ranking of higher than an MVP, that's what we made Aaron Rodgers look like. He looked like this, the super MVP of, of the league. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, if Vice you want to, uh, if you want to uh, take take it away with this 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 Titans pass defense against this Texans pass offense, I mean we got our pieces in the secondary full strength, do we not? Mm-hmm. So let's see what happens on a more neutral weather field, because yeah. I don't know we <laughs> we keep blaming it on the snow, but I think that was a factor, uh, just and how out of sorts that this defense looked. But yeah, what what are we looking no at? No doubt. I don't necessarily want to talk about this Titans passing defense, but I suppose it, it does fall to me each week. The Titans come <laughs> into this one limping in the barn, obviously being ripped to shreds by Devontae Adams, Aaron Rodgers last week. They come into this one 28th in overall pass defense. Houston oh. comes into this one fourth in passing offense. That might be um, a little skewed because Houston's yeah. been trailing in lots of games. Obviously, they're leaning on Deshaun Watson to be Superman each week. So, yeah, he's probably going to put up a lot of numbers, obviously. Deshaun Watson is the X factor in this game. If the Titans can slow down Deshaun Watson at all, uh, I think they have a really good shot at winning this game. Obviously, Will Fuller's stable – or Will Fuller's stable. Deshaun Watson's stable is less full with Will Fuller being suspended nice. uh, in the PED scandals. Randall Cobb is on the injured reserve. No more Kenny Stills uh, on this Texans offense who was released mid middle of the year there. They still do sport Brandon Cooks. Uh, you know, that, that is a weapon that can scare you. Savvy vet with a lot of speed. Uh, mm-hmm. And then uh, tight end Jordan Atkins will be, you know, against these linebackers who have had trouble covering the tight end. Uh, Kiki QT, not looking as cute this week. He's questionable. I don't know if he plays. I dropped that in our picks video too. Uh, shout out to yeah. that joke there. I'll double dip. <laughs> shout out, um, shout out your own jokes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Laramie wow. Tunsil is uh, listed as doubtful for this game at left big. tackle. That would be a big piece there. Uh, and uh, starting right guard Brett Cuvail, I believe, is the, is it uh, is the pronunciation there. He's also not looking great for this game with a concussion. Uh, but obviously, this Titans pass rush has nothing they they got nothing to bring to the table it's mm-hmm. non-existent uh do we have faith at all in the titans secondary if you look oh. yeah at, at last week that was our first game with all of our starting uh, uh you know safeties and corners playing you look at uh adoree jackson desmond king malcolm butler were starting at corner last game and then you had vaccaro and byard at the back end that is the first game this year we've started out of the box with mm-hmm. those five as our secondary Yes, it was snowy. Yes, Desmond King looked like he's never seen snow in his life and he couldn't get his footing at all. You know, a lot of our corners looked that way. Uh, Dory Jackson was very hesitant in the snow. I don't think he's played in many snow games being a USC product. Right. Uh, but, but something I wanted to note about this Titans pass rush, I don't think it's going to matter that Laramie Tunsil might not play. Uh, this came from Teron Davenport, uh, who, who is the ESPN writer for the Titans. The Titans have an NFL worst this season, 15 sacks. Now, there's been uh, five teams, I believe, four teams uh, with less than that in a, in a calendar season. They <laughs> total have gone to, yeah, less than Ever? that total in a calendar. I, that's, this is what, I, what, I've, what I've seen. Uh. Uh, so you have the 2008 Chiefs, who went 2-14, and 14, had less than 15 sacks on the year. Oh, God. Uh, the 2018 Raiders went four and 12, 13 sacks on the year. 
1981 Colts, 13 sacks. They were 2-14. and 14. 2009 Jeez. Jacksonville Jaguars uh, had 14 sacks on the year, 7-9. and nine. So something to just – Shout out, to the, shout out to the 2009 Jags. They won seven games that year. I, hey, way, way to yeah. go. <laughs> so, yeah, something to digest with how bad this pass rush and this, you know, passing defense as a whole has been on the year is it highlights how good this offense has been, Justin. Yeah. The Titans yeah. are on the verge of winning their 11th game. They should be winning their 11th game and their first division title in over a decade. And they're matched up with these teams – who have won two games, four games, two games, seven games. Seven games is the best wow. anybody's ever done with this bad of a pass rush. So, oh my gosh, that, I don't know what you do with that. that. Yeah, like that does that's that speaks to how great the offense is or how much this offense carries this team. But yeah, how yeah. are we one win away from getting eleven wins in a division title in a historically bad uh, pass rush as far as get, getting sacks, the sack numbers? So, uh, it, it, that's that's ridiculous. So unbelievable. I mean, yeah, go, go offense. I'm, I'm here for the offense, not, not necessarily <laughs> the defense. So, um, Just something to chew on. I don't think, you yeah. know, this group, we mentioned, you know, starting out the Green Bay game with a full stable of secondary players, Adoree Jackson, Malcolm Butler, uh, et cetera, et cetera. That was their first time ever on the field. If we get them to gel a couple of games, yes, our secondary could improve. But I think the core problem in this defense is that there's no push on the defensive line whatsoever. They're not getting back there to disrupt the quarterback. And, you know, 32 NFL quarterbacks, the majority of them who are starters are going to sit back there. And if you give them time, going to pick you apart. So I don't know what you do with this pass rush at this point, man. I don't know if you bring in, take a flyer on Clay Matthews. Who cares at this point uh, with yeah. that stat? You know, we're looking at teams who haven't won more than seven games in a season with how bad they've been. Uh, so I'm going to give the advantage to Deshaun Watson and the uh, passing offense of the Houston Texans, sure. the long-winded advantage there. But I, I thought that was a very interesting statistical nugget to bring up uh, no, with, with this sure. Titans pass rush. It, yeah, it kind of just yeah highlights – it really puts into perspective both how bad this, this pass, pass rush is and then conversely how good the offense is and how much they've been carrying this team as a whole. Um, and I don't know, I'm kind of looking at Deshaun Watson and I'm like, man <sighs> – well, why, well, do you have to play in this game, man? Do you have to play? Yeah. You you're might be without two starting offensive linemen. You're down like three of your top four receivers. Uh, you might not have your backup running back in Duke Johnson, who's questionable uh, coming into this game, who's a, who's a uh, threat out of the backfield catching the ball. Uh, so, and your team is 4-11. and 11. Don't you kind of just want to pack your bags? Like, dude? Yeah. Would, no, they, they definitely want to spoil. Now, I think Deshaun Watson's like, I'm, I want to take down this division rival. And I'm pissed still about how that first matchup ended. Mm. He's probably excited. And, yeah, because he's probably thinking, dude, I, don't, I could have no offensive lineman in front of me. And this pa pass rush still won't get to me. So, I don't think he's thinking, like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to be risking getting hurt or anything, looking at how bad we are at getting to the quarterback. But, uh, whatever, whatever. It's Deshaun Watson. Yeah, he, he's, he's got the competitive fire. He's throwing himself out there to play in a meaningless game. So, yeah, we're, we're going to have to come ready. But I, I am excited to see the secondary and, and what, what they can do uh, at full strength in uh, a field that's not going to be covered with snow. Uh, you know, I think with getting shredded by Aaron Rodgers has got to help coming into this game. You know, you, you kind of look you know, a quarterback who's having a great season, who's also mobile uh, in Aaron Rodgers, and you're getting the same thing with Deshaun Watson. So, you know, it's good that they're coming into this week after having played a very similar style quarterback, I guess, mm -hmm. is, is what I'm trying to say. So we'll see. Got need really would like to see a bounce back performance, but yeah, yeah. an advantage for sure to, to Deshaun Watson in that passing offense. No doubt. You want to pick it up with this Titans run defense who was not great either. I mean, the Titans defense as a whole wasn't great last week in Green Bay. But, you know, maybe the slightly brighter spot if we want to say something nice about the Titans defense. This yeah. uh, group has maybe done their job. Titans run defense versus the Texans rush offense. Yeah, it's hard to hard to feel good about the run defense after A.J. Dillon, third stringer, ripped us to shreds, uh, just running, plowing through the snow, plowing through the defense. And then Aaron Jones uh, also almost got 100 yards against this rush defense. Mm -hmm. uh, Titans came into that game last week, I think 15th in the league uh, in rush defense and yards given up per game. Well, after that game, they dropped four spots down to 19th uh, in the league. So uh, hopefully they can bounce back. Uh, the, the, the Texans rush offense, even with 
those two starters who may miss this game uh, are coming into this game 31st in the league in rushing offense. So once again, it's all about Deshaun Watson. It's all about the, the Texans are going to go as far as Deshaun Watson takes him. Uh, it all depends on how he plays. Cause he had, like I said, Duke Johnson back up running back uh, questionable coming in, coming into this game. Uh, so it's going to be David Johnson, the other, the other Johnson and Johnson yeah. twins there. Uh, I mean, and he's been, kind of been in and out of the lineup too. I don't know. I, I don't know what to expect. I'm expecting our rush defense to have a, a bounce back game though, Jake, uh, for sure. Uh, the, the offensive line of the Packers is much better than the Texans offensive line. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, we talk about how bad our pass rush is, uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, our, our, our run defense is better. And I don't know how is it just in the way the offensive the defense kind of plays and they, they are able to close the running lanes better than getting by an actual offensive lineman to take down a quarterback. I, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. Uh, one player who's kind of been under a lot of fire and criticism uh, lately is Titans Rashawn Evans. Uh, you know, he, this guy's our first round draft pick from three years ago now. It's in his third season. I thought had a pretty good season last year. Uh, he, was, he was looking good, but I don't know. He's been kind of hit and miss. Uh, I think when Jayon Brown went down, that I think that kind of affected Rashawn mm-hmm. Evans' play. Uh, I think that those two things have kind of correlated together. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, he's seen it on Twitter. If you're on Twitter, some, some tape of Rashawn Evans not really playing, you know, downhill or, or attacking the ball or able to get off blocks. And I don't know, he's kind of a player that, you know, we wanted to kind of mention that's been under some fire, also kind of hurt us uh, with a bad penalty early in that game uh, against the Packers that allowed them to uh, did. continue a drive. So would really like to see Rashawn Evans kind, kind of bounce back and, and to have a solid game, uh, you know, against a lesser Texans rushing attack uh so I don't know I I think we should get the advantage here uh I I may you could call it a push but you know I don't know what what do you see in this rush running defense I mean looking on paper yeah that you would take this Titans rush defense on the Rashawn Evans note yeah he kind of looks lost and you, you look at that second level of the Titans defense you know that linebacker group you don't have Jayon Brown who was your kind of field captain your a communication guy and you look to somebody else like Rashawn Evans who has been his kind of partner in crime in that in that linebacker group to maybe step up be even more vocal leader and he he looks as lost as anybody out there Justin mm-hmm. uh, you you mentioned yeah you see the the little clips of tape that that roll up what's wrong with this tight defense well Rashawn Evans playing really bad there in the middle uh, so who's to say hopefully he can he can use his short yardage plays he always yeah. he always shows up on the fourth and ones fourth and goals right uh but you know everywhere else on the field he, he kind of seems a little lost but yes i would take uh the the titans rush defense here and you know something to bring up aren't you so glad that bill o'brien traded deandre hopkins away for a second round pick and Dude. david johnson David Johnson is leading the 31st best <laughs> rushing off, second worst rushing offense. Dude. Just hats off to Bill O'Brien. Thank you, Bill O'Brien. Fantastic. DeAndre Hopkins would have had two career games against this past defense. He would have completely annihilated us. Uh, so, yeah, good, good to see. It's good to see for uh, for, yeah. for Titans fans to, to not have Definitely. to worry about that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, we. I think the only key we don't match up well against is this pass defense against their pass offense. So mm-hmm. I, I think we, we this team has the advantage coming into this game and, and all other aspects. Perhaps not special teams, if we want to talk about that. We're having some COVID scares, Jake. Our beloved Brett Kern is kind of – is he expected to play? I think it's been reported that even though he's kind of in that protocol and he's mm-hmm. under quarantine, he didn't test positive himself. Uh, he's tested negative, so we are expected to get him back off that COVID list because, uh, I mean, we might need him. I mean, we saw what happened when we didn't have him. Uh, the entire team fell apart, not just the special teams. The whole team fell apart without Brett Kern out there. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we need him. We need him out there. Yeah, it's, you know, you read the Stephen Goskowski news early in the week. Obviously, he tests mm-hmm. positive for COVID. Stephen Goskowski will definitely not be in this game. And we've been talking about it week after week. We're starting to trust Steven Goskowski. He has been making his kicks on a consistent basis. And, of yeah. course, you come to the most important game of the year, Week 17, win for the division. And, you know, obviously he's out now that we trust him. Uh, so that's, that's the way it goes. And then when Brett Kern's news came out, you, you know, now we start to panic because yeah. we can't have Trevor Daniel back out there, who, yes, would have been Brett Kern's replacement. Thank no. God Brett Kern is expected to play. Unbelievable. Uh, 
unbelievable that Trevor Daniel is still a part of this football team at any facet. Uh, you look at Houston's side of things. Kaimi Fairbairn is, uh, you know, they're, they're kind of long tenured kicker. Brian Anger, an even longer tenured uh, punter for them. Uh, so consistency there from the Texans. Kicking for your Tennessee Titans this weekend will probably be Sam Sloman. Sloman. What a great name for a kicker, for one. Uh, yeah. He kicked a few games for the Los Angeles Rams this year, and he was 8 of 11 for field goals on the year. I think he, I, I did like read it. he missed three extra points on the year, but, you know, when it comes to Steven Goskowski versus this guy, I mean, his stats are de- almost better as far as percentages. Yeah, not really much of a drop-off. So, yeah, I'm glad we're getting a kicker that has kicked this year. Yes. We're not, like, getting a guy that hasn't kicked in two years or we're dragging him or he's, he's on a practice squad rookie guy who's never played in a game before. I'm glad we're getting somebody with experience this season and has a decent percentage. Yeah, eight, eight for 11, like you said. Yeah, so uh, Miami of Ohio product. Shout out all, all my Red Hawk uh, friends here in Ohio. Uh, so we'll see how Scott Sloman goes. Maybe he's the golden toe that this, you know, Titans special teams needed in the in the field goal department. Who knows? We'll Did see how it goes. Scott Sloman or is it Sam Sloman? Sam Sloman. Did uh, I say Scott? You did. We're already getting it wrong. We're already. Pardon you know. me, Sam Sloman. Man, Sam disrespect. Sloman. Uh, you got you got to love a guy whose last name is Slow Man. So yeah, you, know, you got to wonder what his forty time is. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say maybe on some kickoffs we'll get to see him in action, r- running down the returner. We'll see how slow this man is. So we'll um, call special teams uh, to Houston's advantage only yeah. because Stephen Goskowski is going to be out for this game. Brett Kern uh, expected to play. Please God, don't trot out Trevor Daniel ever again. I don't want to see uh, him on the field. Uh, Justin, do you have yeah. any predictions, keys to this game? How do the Titans yes. go to Houston and win their first division title since 2008? I was in fifth grade, Justin. This mustache oh, was not Lord. around the last time. Oh, the man. Titans won. I can't even picture you without a mustache. I mean, I, I'm picturing you in fifth grade with the exact same a thick mustache. Just sort of yeah. <laughs> um, You know, yeah. I mean, you got to look at – the key's got to be on the defensive side of the ball and how we're going to be able to slow down Deshaun Watson – I think the key to this game, uh, you know, I'm looking at the Brandon Cooks factor. I mean, De- Devontae Adams, number one receiver on the Packers, tore up, tore up this defense, tore him a new one. Uh, we could not stop him regardless of who we had covering him. You know, Malcolm Butler is having the best season in this, uh, of anybody in this secondary. And he's, he's, brought, he's brought together some really solid performances and shutting down uh, some number one receivers. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so – I feel like, you know, should, I don't know what the strategy is, but I'm kind of looking at the, you know, Deshaun Watson to Brandon Cook's connection. If we can take that element out of their offense, I really like the chances just in general of, of this team winning this game. Uh, I think that's what we got to key in on. Uh, make sure that that connection doesn't, doesn't go off. So whether it's Butler shadowing him, I'm glad we're getting uh, Adore Jackson back because if anybody on this uh, defense can match Brandon Cook's speed, it's got to be a Dory Jackson. So maybe we'll see some Jackson on uh, Cooks uh, throughout the game. So, yeah, I think, you know, we, we got to be able to take out that connection. I know Jordan Aikens is a uh, – Atkins or Aikens? Yeah, Jordan Aikens, their tight end, is a solid tight end who can, who can do some damage. And, I mean, this pass defense is not great against tight ends either, uh, much less number one receivers like uh, Deshaun Watson, Brandon Cooks. I mean, uh, uh, Devontae Adams, Brandon Cooks. Uh, but, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of looking at that uh, go, yeah, coming into this game. I do trust this offense to string together drives and put up points on this battered uh, Houston secondary and 31st rank r- rush defense. So as long as we can slow down this passing connection to Cooks and probably a- uh, Aikens, nothing really else scares me about uh, this, uh, this Houston offense. So uh, I, g- give me the Titans winning this game. And if we can get that done, I think we'll get the dub. Uh, give me winning this Give us, give me winning this game. Uh, I'll say 34 to 26. Houston gets 26 points. I don't know. I like it. One possession game, you think? Yeah. Yeah. All yeah, right. man, maybe it's a garbage touchdown at the end. I, Fair yeah, enough. For the Texans, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, yeah, 34 26. That's what I got. What about you? I could see it. Uh, yeah, it's going to come down to this defense holding Houston under, uh, I'm going to say, 24 points uh, because. Yeah. This Houston, Texas team is 4-11, and 11, bottom dwellers for a reason, Justin. And it's because their defense has been god-awful all year. Uh, you know, the Titans put a 40-burger on them. It took overtime, but they put up 40 points against this Houston, Texans team in week five. 
And I think the Titans offense has only gotten better since that week five matchup. Uh, and maybe this Houston Texans defense has maybe got even worse uh, with their showcases against, you know, Cincinnati. And uh, yeah. they, they had another bad loss recently. And you look at Houston's four wins as well. It's, you know, Jacksonville twice. It's, uh, you know, I think the, the Chargers maybe. I, I, I'm not sure. But the, it's not the, good teams. Detroit, they beat – no. Yeah, or yes, the Patriots. I think they might have been the Patriots at home. That's it. Those are their four wins. It's, the, it's Jacksonville twice, you know, a 1-14 in 14 team. We're going to be probably 1-15. in 15. Yeah. Uh, You know, the Detroit Lions, who everybody rolls over the Detroit Lions this year, and, and a bad New England team. So, yeah. long, long story short, this defense has to hold uh, Detroit – Detroit, now I got the Lions on my mind – hold Deshaun <laughs> Watson and company under 24 points. And I trust this offense to put up 30-plus on this defense. I mean, it's, yeah. it's going to come down to that. Uh, don't leave any points on the field. Scott Sloman. Is that right? Sam, Sam Sloman. <laughs> he really Sam want his Sloman. name Sam to be Sloman. Scott. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'll just call him Scott. Slow yeah, man. Yeah, don't miss any Scott picks man. out there. Don't don't make us dread any, you know, six point, you know, leads that might, you know, decide the game. And and just yeah. come ready to play, please. This is a bad Houston Texans team. The Titans, all you gotta do is take care of this team who has their bags packed and your division champs heading into the playoffs. You're looking at a home playoff game for the first oh, time love it. again since 08. So yeah. Just be ready to play, and I think Mike Vrabel is going to have him have him ready. We've seen it time and time again. He he's a he's a good coach as far as leading this team to be ready in these games. I'm mm-hmm. going to take the Titans to win this football game, Justin. I'm going to give us 38 points, and I'm going to give the Houston Texans 23 points. Uh, I think it's going to be a like multi-possession it. game, uh, and leave no doubt. Leave no doubt. Blow this team out. Um, you know. Maybe Amen. if it is a blowout, pull Ryan Tannehill, pull Derrick Henry. But, you you know, let's let's see um, who's back there. Logan Woodside get his first touchdown of the year. That would be nice to see. Yeah. You know, look, looking at last year, I like how you said, you know, let's look good doing it and, and build some confidence going into the playoffs. You know, last mm-hmm. year, yes, they sat Deshaun Watson and I think DeAndre Hopkins, a couple key starters. Uh, but I think the Titans might have won that game anyway had – they've been playing I mean they went in there and they they put it on the Texans and I think that kind of instilled and helped the confidence and maybe early on helped us get on that roll that where we uh, upset two playoff teams on the road Uh, so I mean if we eke out a three-point win in overtime or something like that and we're kind of you know limping into the playoffs not a whole lot of confidence or momentum uh, that could carry over into that first playoff game so I would love to see a confident dominating win uh for this Titans team to capture that division crown, leave no doubt, like you said. Uh, and, yeah, that would make me feel a lot better uh, going into the playoffs for sure. But, you know, want to win the game regardless. I don't care, you know, how it's done. I'll, I'll take an overtime win if, if that's what it takes. But, uh, uh, yeah, I would, I would love to look good doing it and carry that momentum into next, next week. Indeed, yeah. And we were, we were here Monday morning. I kind of mentioned it in our picks video when we were talking about this game. The Titans got, yes, they got absolutely steamrolled last week in front of the whole country. Yes, that's deflating as a football team, especially this late in a playoff push. You could have, you know, wrapped up the South last week, yada, yada, yada. But Green Bay is a good team. The Titans went out of their element. When do the Titans ever play snow games? You think New England, 59 to nothing. You think Green yeah. Bay, just this past week, 40 to 14. They don't play well in the snow. They're a team from the South. They literally went out of their element to go play a really – you know, really good Super Bowl contending team with the MVP, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, the probable MVP with Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams, best receiver in the league. They, they, they got blown out by a really good team. At least it wasn't, you know, a really bad team who, who, you know, hung 40 on them and the Titans look look flat. Mm -hmm. Uh, The Titans need to go into this one. Leave no doubt. I still think we have a good football team here, Justin. Uh, Very excited at the the prospect of hosting a home playoff game, winning the AFC South. Uh, it's all right. there for us. We just got to take this Houston team to the woodshed, and it's ours. They're four and eleven, Justin. It could be ours, uh, it, just in yeah. the blink of an eye at uh, three twenty-five Central Time on Sunday. Yeah. So hopefully we can go and get it done. Yeah, I mean, you know, we we talk about this Titans. This Titans team can make the playoffs in several different different ways. You know, getting help here and there, and it looks like we're gonna have to do it on our own because of you know, like we said, they're uh, uh, Buffalo resting Josh Allen and. Uh, COVID here, there, Steelers resting starters that otherwise would have helped us had these teams uh, particularly uh, won. Uh, but at the end of the day, dude, 
if the Titans miss the playoffs, we have nobody to blame but ourselves. There's just there's no excuse we, we should drop this game with everything that's at stake and everything we've got to play for. So, you know, just sh- shut off the outside help, the outside teams that, that could help out this tit- Titans team. And, dude, I, I want to see us get it done. I mean, it, it's still it would suck still if, if the Dolphins lose the noon game. We know the Titans clinch the playoffs, but we go out and lay a dud against Houston. And the Colts win the division. Like, yay, well, at yeah. least we're in the playoffs. But, uh, man, yeah, I, I would rather, you know, look look good, look dominating, and uh, earn this playoff spot and earn this division title. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see if it happens. We'll see if it happens. Definitely. I, I, I mean, closing thought, if you can't go beat this 4-11 Houston Texans team, do you deserve to be in the playoffs, you know, anyways? Yeah. Right. It kind of boils down to that. So let's go take care of business. Uh, anything to take us to the barn? Nothing? Anything? Nothing. No, tighten up, guys. Uh, you guys have a good new year. Be safe. Wear your seatbelts. Don't get behind the wheel. If you, if, you got, if you got a party, you party animals out there. But uh, it's the end of 2020. Maybe 2021 will uh, bring uh, the cure to all viruses and everything else that bad that happened this year. I don't That'd know. That'd be great. Same, but that would be an, you, you told me uh, to take it away, and that's what that's what you got. Hey, warm and fuzzies, great PSA. Uh, everybody have a happy new year. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Tell us your thoughts about this Titan team heading into week 17. Win it in. Win in the AFC South is ours, Justin. It's going to yeah. be ours. It's Time for a new hoodie, ours. Jake. Let's go get a win. Time for a new hoodie. New, Time for well, a new you're going to be getting me a new hoodie after you lose in the pick series. Uh-huh. But that's neither we'll see here about nor that. there. Neither we'll see here about nor that. there. All right. <laughs> All right. Peace out, everybody. Have a great weekend. See you guys.